The ability to easily add an HMI to your current automation system can be a huge advantage. Let me show you how easy it can be. So the first step is you see our current network view here. We only have the controller. First step is add new device. Click on HMI, comfort panel, 12 inch, and click OK. So ultimately what the portal is doing for us at this point is actually creating a wizard uh, for us. So we're going to have a pop-up box that easily walks us through the entire HMI architecture we want to use for this particular system. Okay, so there's a PLC connection as the first button. We're not going to use that. We don't care. Click on Next. You can change the background color here, screen title, navigation field, date, time, logo, whatever. We're going to leave those defaults. Here's the alarms. We're going to keep the defaults as well. The screens. Here you can actually create your standard architecture of your screens. That way every single time you have a new HMI, you can easily go through the wizard and create those screens uh, very fast and efficiently. We're going to leave root screen and screen one. That's no problem. System screens, we're not going to use any. And the buttons, as you can see, for instance, for this application, I want to move them to the left instead of the bottom. And I can easily manipulate the system buttons back onto this with just dragging and dropping them on. And there are my system buttons on the left-hand side now. At this point, I want to click on Finished. So ultimately, what the portal is going to do for us, it's going to give us a photorealistic view of this HMI and the screens we just created. Here they are. Let me minimize this and go to Fit to Screen. So here's our root screen. Okay. If we want to add a new screen, all I got to do is go back here in the tree structure and just double click on add new screen. Again, it'll give us another photorealistic view of that new screen. Click on fit the screen. And for instance, if you want to change an attribute of that screen, now that I have focus on it, I can right click on it, go to properties, or for instance, if I want to change the name, that's what I want to do. Change it to two. So now I have my root screen, screen one, screen two. Okay, if I want to have navigation buttons for this root screen, all I have to do is drag and drop them on. There's root screen. There's screen one. Now I've got my navigation buttons. Okay. Now that I've accomplished the new screen and all the standard HMI architecture, what about actually tying it to the current code? Something I want to show you real quick. If I go back to device and networks, you'll see now I have my current automation architecture, including the new HMI, but they haven't been networked together yet. Well, if I actually go back to the code of the current control system, program blocks, may no be, let's double click on that. Now that I have the code of the automation architecture, I want to give focus to the root screen and choose split screen. So now I have the actual brand new root screen as well as the code from a current automation architecture. If I want to tie them together, what I want to do is just go grab a bit field from the code, drag and drop it on, and you see I get these little alignment bars, just like you get when you do anything in PowerPoint. That way you can easily take boxes and make them align the way you want to. If I want to resize, refit this bit field, all I got to do is go grab one of the corners, drag it to wherever I want it to go. If I want to actually do an attribute change, just give focus to it, click on Properties. Let's change the text size, for instance. Instead of 19, we want to use actually 32. Click OK, and I also want it to be centered. So now I've changed attri attributes of this bit field. Let me click off the split screen, and let me show you the device and networks. So now if I click on this little icon here, show address labels, the moment we pass that bit field from the code to the actual HMI panel, it automatically created the Profinet network the IP addresses, device names, including even the logical connections. It did everything in the background for us. That's how smart the portal really is. Okay, so the network is now complete. How about the actual control? Let me go back to our root screen. 
Let me drop this down and let me go to our libraries. So now I want to add buttons and switches. Let me give focus to that. So ultimately we're going to launch a library of different types of buttons and switches we could use for controlling. Now that we have them launched, let me go down to the rotary switches. Let me drag that on. Let me resize, refit, however I like. And then I can use the alignment bars to make certain everything looks good on this HMI screen. Give focus to it, right click, properties. What I want to do is go to general, go to the tag. And since I know the code from the current automation system, I know exactly which tag I want to use to tie to this rotary switch so I have actual control between the two systems. So let's just type motor one. That's the one I want to use. Use smart type. There's the tag, so now our control code from this rotary switch to the actual code itself has now been tied together. Okay, how about animations? Let me give focus to this, and let's choose that library. So we have the ability from the global library concept to take any kind of graphic animation, whatever you want. You can make it exactly how you want on your HMI panel. Once you've done that, you can save the global library, and every single time you have a new HMI panel come online, you just drag it onto the panel and you're actually completed and done. All you got to do is tie it to the code. Let's do exactly that. Let's drag this conveyor down. So we're going to have a conveyor on this panel. Resize, refit. And I'm going to have a Siemens bottle box. Now that I have focus on him, I want to right click and go to properties. Go to animations. And click on horizontal movements so I can do a on the fly animation of a horizontal movement. It gives me a shadow box plus an arrow. If I go over here and give focus to it, drag that arrow over to the end point. So there's a point of start, there's a point of end. And this is going to be tied to an analog value. So let me go down here and type 27,000 because this will be an analog word. And the start point is going to be 1,000. However, I don't have a tag I want to use from our analog inputs. So let's go do that first. Let's go back to our device and networks. Give focus to the actual CPU. Click on device view. Now give focus to the analog card. And you'll see that we have analog uh, input word 112. That's the one I want to use. I'll also go back to a plus or minus 10 volts so that I have a full range of that analog word. Let's go to our tags. Show all tags. As you can see here, all I have to do is type IW112, click enter. At this point, the tags will give you the possibility of creating the actual data type as well as the tag name for that analog word automatically. You don't have to do anything. I'm going to use this current tag it, it auto-created for me. That's fine. Let's go back to the root screen. Give focus to the actual bottle box. Click on animations and just click TAG, smart type. There is the tag one. That's what I want to use. At this point, I can give focus back to the CPU. Click the download arrow button. What the system will do now is going to go out and search the network and try to find this automation system. It's going to give us a dialog box over Profinet. He's searching. He has found the IP address of that controller. I can actually click on the flash LED button. So now I've clicked on that. It's actually going to go back out over Profinet. It is the correct controller at this point. I can click the load button. So now what he'll do is he'll do a quick compilation of this analog word and this tag and the logical connection over Profinet to the control system for us. Click on load. Now we've loaded that simple connection. What I want to do now is give focus to the HMI. And you'll see this little box up here is called the start simulation. I'm clicking on this. Ultimately we have the ability to virtualize an HMI panel you don't have to have the physical hardware to do it. We can tie that directly to the automation system and prove out the fact that that system works before you have to actually go out and buy the hardware. Let me give complete focus to it. So you can see here we have the virtualized panel at this point. Our bit field is zero and our switch is in the off position. If I click on the switch, you can see our motor is running now and our bit field has gone to one, so that means that we are in a run mode. If I turn that switch off, you can see everything has gone back to a steady state and it's stopped. If I come to back to the analog potentiometer, I can come over here and I can move the bottle box 
and I'm able to do the entire animation of this bottle box, including all this HMI, I did in a matter of minutes. Now that's engineering efficiency.